Riptor in? Uh, Riptor, he, he is oh, not been not. unlocked. Oh, if you want to pay Josh, you can go buy him. Um, welcome to the latest installment of the uh, Let's Play podcast series on us. Today we have special guest Brandon Bailey, who's been promised on the show for a while, but keeps ducking us. Damn. And then we have first time guest James. Uh, they are going to be our first victims to our star, our internet star in a reasonably priced car. And, um... Hey Josh, can you get the volume down a little bit so there's oh, not yeah. too much Oh yeah, good call. Who's so, the door down the bottom? I'll fight with I, Not all the way down, but <laughs> a little bit down. I didn't... Um, but the sound bar doesn't have a volume. Oh, sound bar doesn't have a volume? Okay. Well, it doesn't have a volume bar to where I can see uh, okay. how long I'm going. So they're going to be our first, uh... Internet stars in a reasonable ass car later on in the show where they're going to try to beat our very own version of the Stig around the top of your track. So we're, we're going to have to see how they do later on. But tonight we're playing Killer Instinct for the Xbox One. Brandon is actually going against his favorite character. See how it well he breaks does. his heart. I know. So is there a story to this game? There was in the original, and I don't remember the story. Yeah, I was like, good luck. I don't remember I'm the sure story. there is some sort of story. But, um... Uh -oh. um yeah, Brandon, don't even ask me the buttons, because I haven't played this game since I first got it. Yeah, I guess, uh, try the Street Fighter moves. Well, that's all I ever really do. It's like, I do them, yeah, I I do know, and then I will test buttons and figure out moves that way. Usually the Hadouken, the Sonic Boom, and the Flash Kick all do moves. Yeah. In every video game, or yeah. in every fighting game. Sorry, Rizzo. <laughs> He's not sorry, Rizzo. He's okay. a turncoat bitch. Yeah, I know, right? Look at him. <laughs> little snowman. Yeah, Riptor and what was it, Jag was the ninja? Jago. Jago, those are my two guys. Jago was cool. And Orchid, I used to. Yeah, Orchid, I used to Orchid too. Um, TJ Combo yeah. wasn't bad. Yeah, I used the Barbarian from Gold. I don't remember if he was in the new, in the uh, original. Uh, make it come back. Uh, don't do me like that. I also liked Full oh. War. Full War was cool, but he was, sometimes he was hard to use. Uh, too bad we can't get the PS4 working on the Battle Brand. We're going to put you on Street Fighter. Yeah. I, I did better in an update add arcade mode to Street Fighter. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, so what? Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right, and Brandon got me an achievement! Woo! Sparring glaciers out here. <laughs> uh, but get into the topic at hand this week. So we all saw the Doctor Strange trailer. Yep. That's And as I put in the article on the website, that's probably the strangest pun intended, motherfuckers. Uh, bleep that out so we can start monetizing this YouTube channel, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, is probably, it probably will be the strangest of all the Marvel movies, even stranger than Guardians of the Galaxy. You so know what it reminded me of? Are you not doing the arcade mode, or are you just doing a regular versus mode against the computer? Uh, I can do the story mode. Yeah, do the story mode. That way you don't have to like repick every time. Yeah. All right. And that way we might actually earn characters. The preview reminded me a lot of Inception. Nice. Oh, just the one scene, maybe. No, the whole thing reminded me. Oh, yeah, because they, yeah, they had, like, the bending of reality. Yeah. But I think that's more of the astral plane yeah. kind of yeah. thing. I mean, a lot of it did just remind me of, except yeah, not they, just the one They should have just stripped so Chris Nolan from Warner Brothers. They should have. Yeah. <laughs> DC's making shit superhero movies. Come over to the Marvel oh, side. You, you know, we'll make good money. You can make whatever kind of movie you want. Yeah. I think David Ayers will do a good job with Suicide Squad, but... He's directing two of them, right? Yeah, he's yeah, the director of Suicide Squad. But that one I had a lot but, more. But hold your thoughts on that. That's coming up in a second. Okay. Hold your okay. thoughts on that while we still talk about Doctor Strange. I like um, Benedict Cumberbatch in that role. I think he looks like the long, lanky, gothy oh, yeah. Doctor Strange look. So I, I have no of, idea uh, why like Joaquin Phoenix was the original frontrunner for that. Really? I really? Yeah, I like Joaquin Phoenix. I don't see him in that role. Yeah, Plus, yeah. with that stupid uh, scar he has, I don't think he has a cleft lip. Yeah, he can't grow a mustache, a proper mustache. That's true. <laughs> so, I thought it was he weird though, that he has beard. I don't know. I, think I, I thought it was yeah, weird that, that Benedict Cumberbatch was doing an American accent, but I guess you know. Yeah, because I don't think I've ever seen him like do an American accent. Yeah, was... I've never seen it, so I was kind of thrown off at first. Like, oh, okay. But, you know, I, since the character is American, so I, I guess, you know, that fits. Though, being like Doctor Strange, like, I think he could have gotten away with, um... A with his regular accent. voice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that he could have gotten away with that, because I think, I think that's one of those characters people would have allowed it, but... Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter, because his American accent isn't bad. It's better than his Indian accent from uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, 
Uh, no, no, in defense of that, in the original Star Trek, they had uh, Ricardo Montalban playing the yeah. Indian, so it's just like, whatever. Yeah, Apparently, Gene like, Roddenberry has no idea where India is actually located. I can't, there's, there's no, there's, ar- there's no argument for or against it in my mind. Like, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> but because, uh, Ricardo Montalban, yeah, he wasn't Indian. No. The, you know, the one problem, and this is totally off topic, the one problem I had with like Star Trek Into Darkness, they were trying to do Wrath of Khan in the original Khan story, like in the TV show, yeah. all at one time, where I think it would have been smarter, instead of trying to do Wrath of Khan, set up the Wrath of Khan, like, do Khan here, and then like two movies down the road, bring, bring, back. bring him back. Or at least maybe when they killed... Spoilers. Uh, spoiler alert when, for uh, a four-year-old movie. <laughs> when, uh, when Kirk died... They probably should have kept him dead for a little bit longer than I don't know one scene. Yeah. I think the, the part that got me, the part that was pretty funny was when Spock was saying how he vowed not to not to give away the future, but then he gave away the future. Yeah. <laughs> About Khan. Yeah. And that, and that and that's part and I like JJ Abrams Abrams, but that's part of the reason why I'm glad he's only doing one Star Wars movie. Cause he tends to write himself in the corner if you give him a long enough timeline. <laughs> Dude, just look at Lost. I mean, I know yeah. it was a little off in cues, but Abrams was the main... Driving force behind that. Yeah. And I always said about Lost, I was like, to me, that would have been a cool movie. But it's nothing I wanted to invest in for a TV show, because I felt it would just be drawn out too long, and that seems to be what happened to Lost. Yeah, yeah. season one was great. Uh, Wait, no, the funny thing is, lucky, lucky for me, I actually got into it very late into the, into the series. Oh, really? I got into it where pretty much everybody fell off. Like, it... The end of season, I think, four, where the island started moving around. Yeah. Or we're, we're not going to do time travel. <laughs> and then they do time travel. Yeah, yeah I got into it, like, the last two seasons. So I had a shit ton, or, I'm sorry, uh, I had a lot to uh, catch up on. Yeah. I still actually haven't caught up on the play. You got I have I, I uh, think season four. Uh, I think I know. Lost is one of those shows where if you watch it, Oof. Like every episode straight up. On the first fight, B. On the first uh, fight, you are dead. It's better, I think. <laughs> I think, you, yeah, if, I I think you can binge it. If you're able to binge it, I think that's something that you can, you'll you end up yeah. liking more than if you just watched it season to season. Yeah, see, Jeff. That's, that's how uh, I'm going to get You got to go call. already? Yeah, it's all, I, gotta, I told Jeff I'd be going to yeah. yeah. I'll be back. Yeah, so he'll be back for the reasonable price car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hoping. I gotta, I gotta get a, gotta get a good time on that race. <laughs> I'll be back then. Uh, All right. Oh. So we'll move on to. Uh, since you brought up David Ayers and Suicide Squad, we'll cover that next. Will Suicide Squad suck? For me and Nelson right now, DC has a shitty track record. We were not fans of Man of Steel. Yeah. Batman yeah. v Superman is garbage. Oh. So they're bad. Oh, for two right now. That's and granted, cool. David wow. Ayers is a better director as far as storytelling. Because like Zack Snyder, I will give him credit. He paints a pretty picture. It's an incoherent blob of a mess of a picture, but damn, is it pretty? Yeah. Well, it's like uh, I, I mean, I liked um, what's the movie with uh, talking about Sucker Punch? Yeah, Sucker Punch. I like Sucker. Punch. You're I still, one. I still haven't finished watching it. I tried to watch it on a day that I got back from work, well, which was Black Friday, and I only had about thirty minutes of sleep. So well, I guess let me rephrase that. I like the, I guess visually the movie was good, but storyline wise maybe it kind of might have sucked. I well, got about fifteen minutes into that movie, and I was like done. <laughs> I mean. I'm, when I think, go back and think about it, it's, it seems like Zack Snyder has gone downhill since his peak at 300. You see, I mean, you didn't even like Watchmen, so... I liked it at first, but the more I watched it, the less I liked it. Yeah, Watchmen's one of the like, opposite effects of like Club Dread had in me. Like Club Dread, going back to when we were talking off camera about uh, mm-hmm. the Broken Lizards guys, the more I watched Club Dread, the more I liked Club Dread. The more I watch The Watchmen, the more I absolutely despise that movie. Really? Yeah, it's just I don't know, but I never really liked the comic book that much. Like, okay. See, I, that's that's what that's. I I, I read the I read the tra- I read the graphic novel, and it's good, but maybe it's because so many people hyped it up to me. It's just like come to As, Jesus yeah. moment. In it's, like the, it's like the, well, like, it's like I think it hurt it a bit. Yeah. There's been so much since The Watchmen that have 
taken the Watchmen as like this is how you do you know make really good comics mm -hmm. really think good Alan stories Moore is also yeah. a little overrated too which one Alan Moore yeah, Alan Moore is kind of a crazy person because yeah, everybody because his, his other comic uh, big time DC comic The Killing Joke it's getting a rated R um, which be animated movie everyone's super excited about it I was like nah I'm not because Alan Moore did something in that that I absolutely hate. He gave the Joker a backstory. There are two uh, characters who I wish never had a backstory. The Joker and Wolverine. Because I thought a good chunk of the appeal of those characters... You didn't like Wolverine Origins? No, I liked Wolverine Origins. Oh, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> but I preferred, I preferred that part of Wolverine to be a mystery. Yeah, like, I, I will admit that. I, as much as I liked the Wolverine Origins uh, miniseries... Um, we're talking about the movie here, right? Oh, no, we're talking about the comic. <laughs> okay, about to say, I was like... Uh, no, I feel like uh, Origins Wolverine, the movie, is not the shit people give it. Like, uh, it's it's a movie I can watch. If it's on TV, I can watch it. Now, Man of Steel, if it's on TV, I'm going to switch over to the Food Network and watch Chop. Man, or why? Property why, why do you hate Man of Steel so much? Because it's not a Superman movie. If it was Hancock okay. 2... See, I'm a huge Superman fan. That's okay. the problem. It okay. ruins Superman. It's not yeah. A, yeah, it I would agree yeah. that it's yeah. not a traditional Superman movie. But it's it, but it, 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 it doesn't get the character right at all. And we've discussed that ad nauseum on this podcast. Oh, yeah. It's just Zack Snyder misses the point of Superman. He misses the point of podcast. And it's just there's so many like broken elements in that movie. Like A couple big things is the supercomputer um, uh, Jor-El. Yeah. How he can see Miss Lane and all that other stuff. That's and goes all my that is, report. Yeah, that is a huge ex machina talking, right there. We're talking about for technology here. Yeah. And, and also the manic block. And also the dubstep machine that's uh, terraforming. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. How everything is getting um like sucked up into it. Yet uh, and Superman had to use all of his might to fly out of it, yet Lois Lane is falling perfectly with everything else floating around her. And it's just it's so um the storytelling is so inconsistent; it breaks its own universe's rules. Because I will, I, in, especially in a comic book sci-fi film, I will suspend my disbelief. But when you have a set of rules, you have to stay true to those rules. And that movie breaks its own rules yeah. so yeah. many times to where it, like, the only thing that got me through my first view of it was it was Superman, and I wanted to see it to the end. And then he, yeah. and he killed somebody. I mean, he killed Zod. Spoiler see, and, alert. and the thing is, like, <laughs> killing Zod isn't even that big of a deal to me. It's the fact that he'd been whooping Zod's ass, throwing him through buildings and stuff like that, and he snaps his neck at the very end when he could have done so many other things non-lethal to stop him. It's like he could have taken him in his face and then snapped. Yeah, he could have gouged his eyes out. Yeah, or covered his eyes. I yeah, mean, there were so many things that Superman could have done to avoid killing him. That's my problem. Like. If Superman had to kill him, like, if he had no other choice and he had to kill him, then I'm fine with it. But the fact that he uh, just decided to snap his neck when he could have done so many other things just kind of bugged me. And also, yeah. Zack Snyder's, like, um, Michael Bayisms of that movie. Like, when Superman tells him to go hide in the IHOP or go hide in the Sears and chucks one of the Kryptonians through that building, it's like... Dude, you just told someone to hide there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's so inconsistent. Like, I don't know. It just bugs me, and it makes. Me... And at first, like, I was, I was not as angry as Nelson is about that movie. But the more I started thinking about it, the more I watched it, and like, yeah, I was, like, that's you know one of those. Because the thing is, Man of Steel was one of those movies that I was like, ah, it's not that bad. But the more I watched it, because I watched it, I will say about three times. It just made me very angry every time I watched it. And uh, did you see that open letter that was on Latino Review about to, uh, Zack Snyder about Man of Steel and Batman? No. I forgot who wrote it. It wasn't Tyler. It should have been. <laughs> um, it, was, it was basically uh, telling Zack Snyder, like, look, How do you, block? you. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> you you said in an interview Maybe that you wounds. didn't. You didn't want to do a Superman movie like right after uh, you he did Watchmen, because he thought Superman was a boring character. Then he goes uh, goes around like a couple years later, ends up doing Superman movie, and he strips away everything that makes Superman Superman for the most part. Uh oh, like outside of outside of his powers, you you made you stripped away every character aspect of him that made him Superman. Like you stripped away all the hope. 
and you and and the guy goes on to say like I get it I get people when people say it's a work in progress and the next Superman he's going to be the Superman that you expect but nope. then you get <laughs> Batman versus Superman yeah, you don't even get Batman the way you're supposed to because yeah. Stephanie Batman doesn't kill that's a major character aspect. You well, can't this... just strip that out. You well... cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You just cannot. Well, that was is... the whole point of like. That's the whole point. Of why he became a superhero? If they decide to go Red Hood in the next in the next one of the next Batman movies, the the whole point of the whole Red Hood thing was that Red Hood kills, kills and Batman doesn't kill. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was what set the Joker. Inside. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, people have made the argument, well, this Batman's old and broken. It's like, well, that's fine if you want to do that Batman, but we have to see that Batman get led up to it. You can't just have Batman showing up killing 19 fools. Yeah. Like, I, if, yeah. If, you want, if you want to give me, like, a transition of where Batman got pushed to the edge by, we'll say, Ra's al Ghul or the Joker, and you, we, well, see, we see him progress to that edge, that's different. But you can't just show me at the edge. You can't just bring me to the edge and say, yeah. this is Batman. Well, because supposedly, so this movie took, uh, so... Robin was killed ten years prior, according to Snyder. Yeah, because so, this Batman's been active for like twenty years or something like that. He's been yeah. active for a while. So the Batman we see is one that's jaded, and he doesn't really care anymore. Mm. So that's why he killed. Yeah, but see, I don't want to be dropped was, in on that thing. Was, man. I'd rather yeah. see a build up to that. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You 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 can't expect audiences to uh, you know just clamor to something that you already built in a backstory like that. Well, it, it's like, uh, that's the biggest difference between your DC and Marvel movies, is that Marvel isn't playing catch-up. DC is. But yeah. the thing is, DC doesn't have to play catch-up. Yeah, they they should mind that they have to play catch-up, because yeah. they don't have to catch-up. Because, like, here's the thing. If you gave us a good Batman and Superman movie, it wouldn't have had that 70% drop-off in week two. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it, it would it would probably, it would probably, it would probably have, like, a Star Wars effect. It would probably still be dominating, because it got beat out by the boss this week. The boss. Yeah. yeah. And probably the Jungle Book's going to trounce it even more this week. Ooh. The Jungle Book had like a 94 on Rotten Tomatoes when I checked earlier today. I, I, I love John Favreau as a director. <laughs> I yeah, actually, he's doing it, isn't he? I, yeah, yeah, I was actually... I, I was and I like the idea of Bill Murray as Blue, because I was never really a big fan of the Jungle Book cartoon, the really? original movie. It, yeah, I only watched watch, watch Tailspin. If you rewatch the original, <laughs> yeah, if you re -watch the original Jungle Book, uh -huh. there's not much of a story there. Really? There really is. There's like, a like, there's I, a I lot of filler. A <laughs> There's a lot of filler and a lot of reused animation. Yeah, I actually saw the video where they reused yeah. the dance sequences. So it's it's just it's just that movie like there's not much there. Oh. But I do like the idea of uh, Bill Murray as Blue. That like intrigues me. That makes me want to see the new Jungle Book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like if they gave us a good movie, like it doesn't have to be a great movie. But if they had just given us a good movie, it'd yeah. be different. Though I do love how like. The people who really wanted it to be good were really big defenders. And like they, they would just like try to like give you every argument. And my favorite part about that is right now staying with eighteen reviews, Captain America Civil War, hundred <laughs> percent. And I'm, I'm, sure, out yet. I'm sure it won't stay at hundred percent. Oh no, no, no. But I'm sure the DC fanboys that and hate it like uh, try every fucking reason to do it. No, that's not no, that's not fans, this is critics. This is not yeah. fans that have it under it's critics. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm sure it will probably much like Winter Soldier is going to be in the 90s. Yeah. Because I think the Russos, unlike Zack Snyder, have a complete understanding of the character they're writing for and a complete understanding of character development, mm -hmm. which is something Zack Snyder has always been a family of his. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a reason why, he's, in my opinion, his two best films are um, Dawn of the Dead, which is a remake, mm -hmm. which he didn't write, mm -hmm. and then... Um, 300, which he just took the Frank Miller comic book and shot scene for scene. Yeah, he, he literally did what Robert Rodriguez did the year before with Sin City. Yeah, so it's just, um... Are you sure the year before? I thought... I thought it might have been, it been I a thought 300 years, came no. first, and then Sin City. No, I was still working at Tommy Hilfiger when Sin City came out. Huh. I know they were right around the time. Yeah, they were around each other, but uh, 300 came out one to two years after. Yeah, I, just, I think because actually 300, I was at Marymount. Okay. Yeah, I just I just don't think that Zack Snyder really understands character development that well. No. Like I said, he can shoot a pretty picture. Like if you just had him directing the film and not involved in any of the writing, yeah. you get some good stuff. But when he's in the writer's chair, because I think part of the problem was, and I was saying this to some friends, 
Three hundred was such a big hit, so now everything's got to be like three hundred. He's got to so live up to the legend of Zack Snyder. No, it's not even living up to the legend, but that he's one of those people. It's like that worked for me, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Unlike other directors, like if you notice, like Steven Spielberg, like Steven Spielberg has the things he does in every film, mm-hmm. but no two Steven Spielberg movies look alike. Right? Yeah, Ready Player oh, One yeah. is gonna be amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Oh, I hope it looks amazing. I'm not a big fan of that book. If you strip away all the nostalgia out of that book, it is a very basic tale of a fat kid making good. That's basically all it is. Yeah. It's like every other young adult book out there, like Divergent and um, The Hunger Games and everything like that. It's exactly like those, except mm. it's got all that 80s nostalgia in it, which is why I got three quarters of the way through the book. I was like, Nelson, tell me how it ends. Because it became like reading every page felt like a chore to me. And I feel uh, like, I, you know what, I feel like, though, because, like, I feel like I would have felt the same way as Josh, but I got the audiobook, and Will Wheaton was narrating it and doing all the voices and everything, and he did a very good job, he did such a good job, I was able to get through it very easily. Reading, reading all that, I would not have been able to get through that book. Yeah. And it's kind of funny, like... I would have stopped in the middle, and, then have, and I, I'd still be in the middle, like, right now. I, I read the first Game of Thrones book, Song of Ice and Fire. No, I'm sorry, the first Song of Ice and Fire book, Game of Thrones. Yeah. I read that book in a week. Mm. That should tell, and it took me, it took me over a month to get three quarters of the way through Ready Player One. That should tell you, like, how much of a chore it was to read that yeah, book. Yeah, see, that's, see, when I took out the thousand page <laughs> if George R.R. Martin it's, tome <laughs> in a week. If it's written very well, you can power right through a book. Yeah, because actually, at first, I was enjoying Ready Player One. The first few chapters, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I was reading. Oh, yeah, I remember that. that, too. But once I got about halfway through that book, it just, it just felt like it was, it was relying. There was like, a lot of padding, too. Yeah. There was definitely fe- a lot of padding. And it's a small book, too, for that matter of fact. It felt like the writer had his beginning, middle, and end. But once he got to that middle, he realized, oh, shit, I'm at the end. I really got to pad this thing By out. By the way, if you're going to try to get rid of that book, I will buy it. I will buy it. All right, somewhere in the bookshelf. Yeah. Go check that out sometime. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably go see the movie because I'm just a big Spielberg fan. So I'll, I think the I'll movie will chance. be really good because you're, there's only so much you can cram in there. Yeah, so I mean, the movie will will have it cut scale back. So. Yeah, and I'm imagine. sure there's only so much they could get really the rights to in that kind of movie. Yeah, true. Because there's a lot of nostalgia in there. Well, it's like in, uh, was it, um, what is the, the animated uh, video game movie? Oh, Wreck It Ralph. Wreck It Ralph. Ralph, Ralph it's like great. they're waiting for, like, they were going to have Nintendo characters, but. Bowser's in there. He is. Wait, yeah, oh, that's right. They were going to have Mario, but Nintendo is so. Protective, protective of, Mario, of Mario. Well, I mean, they barely even had, like, they. I mean, they had a couple Street Fighter characters. You see Sonic, and I think you see Ken and Ryu in one film. Yeah. Definitely, you definitely see Ryu. Zangief's in there. Yeah, Zang- oh, Zangief was great. Um. <laughs> Cubert's in there. Yeah. Watch Pete Cubert. Yeah. <laughs> but long are the long gone are the days of like uh-huh. a Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That was a fantastic movie. But man, trying to do something like that nowadays, that wouldn't happen. You just would not be able to get No, it would happen if the money was right. If the money was right, I mean, I don't see that did you ever think Spider Man was gonna get back? Uh, with Marvel and movies. Okay, true enough. Well, so I mean, it, the, Sony's not making the money off it, but they don't want to give the rights completely back, so they worked out a deal with yeah. Marvel. So I mean, and that and that opens the door for other things because if if the Spider-Man Marvel crossover works, which it will work, mm-hmm. um, that's going to open the doors for other other like companies to like say, hey, you know, maybe if we work with Sony, well. you might see something like that with Marvel and Fox as far as Fantastic Four goes. Yeah. There's no way Fox is giving up on the X Men because the X Men is now ticking upwards again. Yeah, and may, it makes mm-hmm. with Brian money. Singer returning. I mean, I wouldn't mind Deadpool. the the option. I don't need the X Men to cross over. See, I don't want the X Men to cross over. I never liked. I was in the comic book world. I was like the X Men being their own separate thing. Mm. I didn't like them really crossing over with all the other superheroes. Like every once in a while, Spidey popping up was kind of cool, or like Wolverine yeah. popping up in like an event. I mean, that's what I, that's what I'm oh, what sure. I would want. That's yeah. what I want. I wouldn't want what they're doing with Spider-Man, per se, but I would like to see Wolverine pop up somewhere, or maybe they get, like, a Thor cameo or something in, in like, X-Men or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... But, but not a full-on crossover. See, no, uh, actually, if we're... If actually, we're, I would like I would like Deadpool to come over. If, if we're going to pick an Avenger to hop over to the uh, X-Men universe, they probably uh, I want my Wolverine versus Hulk. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. See, uh, I like... That going. 
I like. I would like the you know things to be a little bit closer to the story that they're trying to portray. Like Old Man Logan is going to be interesting to see, from what I understand. Well, I think Old Man Logan. How could they do Old Man Logan without having the Hulks? Well, that's the thing is I think they're gonna they could do their things, but I, I think it's just going to be Old Man Logan in name. I don't think it's going. I think it's going to be like Age of Ultron. It just used the name. Okay. Now Civil War has nothing to do with the Superhero Registration Act, like getting them to reveal their secret identities and stuff like that. They're just <coughs> using that title, and they're going to take the basis of the story and apply like it. Like they take the frame. And then, yeah, and they're going to they're going to rewrite and then flesh it out. And that's another thing Marvel's done better than DC and Warner Brothers is just be able to tell their stories without cramming everything in there. Yeah. Because let's face it, do, do we need, like, in Batman v Superman, do we need that picture of Wonder Woman, um, the quick clip of um, Cyborg, Aquaman, and The Flash, and everything like that? It's like, this, they, they're treating that like a Justice movie, Justice League movie prequel. And when all the other movies for Marvel were basically a prequel to the Avengers, they all stood on their own. If we never yeah. got an Avengers movie, if they never crossed over, if we never had Sam Jackson at the end of Iron Man, all those movies still would have been good. Oh, yeah. Them. I mean, that's the thing. They yeah. they all served dual purposes very well. They served as a catalyst for their own individual properties, their own individual franchises. Yeah. But they were also building toward a new type of franchise that hadn't been done before. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's just kind of like, and because DC's so late to the game... As the as I remember them going on record saying, "Oh, we have no interest in uh, uh, it, trying to recreate what Marvel did," and this was leading into the Avengers. This is like leading into Captain America yeah. one and Thor one. They went on record as saying, "Oh, we're not interested in trying to create something like that." Because let's face it, they even put themselves more behind the eight ball of Batman because that was three years after Man of Steel. They announced no, I, it might even be four years because they announced it three years ago. Yeah. So Man of Steel, I think it was 2012. Yeah. yeah. So I think Man of Steel was 2012, oh. and we finally got another movie. Uh, you know, four years after Man of Steel. Mm. Oh, do we get? Are we did getting, I just beat it? I think, I think you just beat, beat Story Mode from Glacius. Woo! Yeah. But yeah, so it's just kind of like they're even more behind the eight because they're more behind, and then their next movie, Suicide Squad, which really isn't going to have anything to do with the Justice League, except like, it has Batman showing up. They got a piece of the mural. Cool. It looks like it might be a cool looking mural. Yeah. Nelson, so why don't you have my killer instinct? Alrighty. Let's see if I'm any good. Hey, I'm in there. Hey, I'm in there. Damn, oh. that's even close to spelling my name. We just gotta get the J. Move that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did, did oh that's season lot? three. Oh. So there, I guess. Oh yeah, saying. the barbarian was the one, one of the ones I used from uh, gold. Oh man. I don't so have to buy the, the barbarian. Yeah. Oh. Showing you what yeah, because they do get. the free of play stuff with the seasons, and you can get new characters and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they gave you uh, one of the Xbox Live Gold games was um, season one, complete season one. Yeah. Oh, okay. All the season one characters, yeah. Like I got, I actually have Dio uh free to play on the PlayStation Three. They gave me two characters. Yeah. Oh wow. Kasumi and I. Oh, Hayabusa. Well, at least they gave you Kasumi yeah. and so, Hayabusa, my two favorite characters to use. So for back to Doctor Strange, so. Mars, what's the guy's name? He played in played Hannibal. Oh, I know. Mars I Nicholson. Yeah, I think that's. that's and he was in uh, Casino who, Royale. Who does he play? Who who is he? Ah, uh, because I know like I always forget it. I can't pronounce his name. The uh, he was in Red Belt. He was in that movie with uh, Julia Roberts. Yeah. Um. Certainly eating eatables. Yeah, he's got, yeah, it's hard to pronounce. Yeah, he's playing Baron Mordu. Yeah, so Baron Mordu, I guess, is a... But he's not going to be full-on villain in this. Like, No, so I, I think once... I think what they're going to do is... Once Strange becomes Sorcerer Supreme at the end of this movie... Yeah, he's going That's gonna... when Baron Mordu would get pissed. Yeah. And then mm. end up becoming a bad guy. Yeah. yeah that's how they were saying it. Um... Yeah, so I mean, I like how because like, oh, yeah. I don't really know that much about Doctor Strange. Like, I know the basics of Doctor Strange. I was yeah, really yeah. into his comics, uh, so I have zero expectations going into this movie other than I like Marvel his, is yet to disappoint me. Like, even <laughs> in my opinion, their their worst movies, Thor: The Dark World and um, Iron Man Two, those are still watchable movies. I can watch yeah. those on repeat viewing. Yeah, wait, wait, Iron Man Two that was Whiplash, right? Yeah, that was Whiplash. Yeah. Okay, that that was kind of just thrown together because they needed one more movie for Phase Two, so they kind of threw that in there. 
Um, you, and you can and you can tell it's rushed. Looks like the wolf guy from uh, Rampage. Actually, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> and it almost looks like claymation too, yeah. right there, the way that is. It's all five eleven, four hundred fifteen pounds. Jeez, damn, he's fifty. Yeah, he's an old he's man. Old. All right, but yeah, even their worst films, I feel, are better than DC's best. Oh man, well, it's, it's so when, when Marvel first started, like Iron Man was the first one, right? And that was a big game. They, the, the MCU hadn't officially existed yet. Yeah, that was the kicking off point. So they didn't even know. They they so weren't even they, planning, they on, weren't doing planning the on it. So yeah. like when when DC did Man of Steel, they're like, okay, we're doing we're doing Justice League, and they started making all the making all these grand plans before anything even really took off. Didn't they just cancel or take off a bunch of movies from their slate? They didn't take movies. They took away dates. Oh, they took away dates. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. So I mean. And also because of kind of like the big drop off off of Batman v Superman, now Warner Brothers is focusing more on their tent poles like DC, Harry Potter, and Lego movies. They're going to focus less on smaller movies. So the Harry and their Potter, they're bringing movie. Harry Potter back. Well, no, well, they're doing. Oh no, they're Fantastic doing the, Beast. the prequel, yeah. right? Well, prequel. They're 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 in the same. Well, I, I in the same them, universe. Yeah, I wouldn't call them prequels because they take place in the same universe. Universe because. Uh, it's all it, prior, prior to Voldemort stuff, right? Yeah, because yeah. this is in the 20s, so this is pre-Voldemort, okay. pre-Harry Potter's parents. <coughs> Dumbledore gets his name dropped. Oh, oh, it, I made a mistake! Um, the main character for um, the um, Fantastic Beast, he got kicked out of um, Hogwarts. Uh, but, like, Dumbledore spoke praises of him or something like that. I saw that in the latest trailer. Okay. Um, so, I mean, Dumbledore's around, but obviously because he's an ancient wizard. But, yeah, so I, this is a prequel in a sense. It, it takes place before Harry Potter and in the same universe. Okay. But there's yet to be a connection because the book's only like that big. It's a small book, too. Okay. It's, it's, I think it might be shorter than The Hobbit. Really? Uh -huh. so, Are they going to make it in three movies? No, it's one movie. <laughs> but I guarantee you with the success of the book and probably the success of the movie, we will see more books and more movies in this series. And probably eventually it will circle back to Harry. Yeah, well, Rowling, she's running another one, right? I heard that she was running another one. No, not another Harry. There's a sequel to Harry Potter, but uh, it's a play, and they're going to release the script. The play's only, you can only see it in London, and they're uh, releasing the script okay. as a book. I think it's eight, and, it's going to be Harry Potter 8 and 9, or just 8. Hmm. I can't remember. Hmm. But yeah, so they're releasing the play, and it's going to read like a play, hmm. and not like a book. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, circling back to Avengers and Spider-Man, so the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. I thought that was such an odd name. I dig that title for two reasons. A, he's in high school. It's to emphasize yeah. he's still in high yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. And Homecoming symbolic, too. Yeah. He's coming back to Marvel. Marvel's yeah. writing and producing the film. The font is weird. I don't like the font because it looks like a mish between the uh, spectacular Spider-Man yeah. font from the cartoon. Yeah. And this, I don't know, Sony sucks at font. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. The Spider-Man font for the original Spider-Man movies were terrible. The PlayStation 3 font was, font was terrible. <laughs> it was just a reuse of that Spider-Man font. Yeah. So Sony, Sony, you guys, you guys gotta work on your fonts. It's just they're not. Good. Yeah. How's the new Final <clears throat> Fantasy font? Like they have, they're making a new movie. They're making a new Final Fantasy. They're making a new Final Fantasy movie. Oh, because oh, they're, they're, they're like the uh, what is it? Sony Studios or whatever. They're, the studio that did uh, Spirit Within. Oh. Right? I never right. saw that one. Spirit well, Within was very pretty. They're, they're, so that um, studio was making another... It's like Final Fantasy fourteen or... Yeah. sixteen or something? Yeah, uh, the Spirit Within... Uh, it was pretty to look at. That's all I can really say about it. Yeah. Um, like, I never saw that one. I liked Advent Children. I know you didn't particularly care for Seven in their stories. No, I said Seven's overrated. It's not the best Final Fantasy. Uh, uh, a lot of the people that say Final Fantasy VII is the best Final Fantasy are the people that started at VII. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I never started at VII. I, my, my you started at VIII. Yeah, my favorite's VIII. Well, so, actually, I uh, talking to a few friends, they like VIII the most. Really? Yeah. My friend Ryan, like, he, he went back and he started playing all, started with one, went all the way through. I've never played the first two on the original Nintendo. Those are the ones I have played. I played three, four, five... Six. Well, um, I, well, let's see. Seven, original eight, two nine, and ten. Japanese two. Yeah, the, the two that were um, 
the original N- the original like NES version. Yeah, the original NES version. Okay. Played those. Okay, because they released them. Because uh, I didn't start on Game Boy Advance. The very first one I played. Yeah, um, I, I have a couple. Of, I had a couple of the Game Boy Advance and DS ones. Okay. The very first one I played was six, which was three in America. Yes. That's the very yes. first one six I played. Was amazing. That's my second favorite Final Fantasy. My favorite okay. is nine. It goes nine, six, five, four, then seven. Are my top five Final Fantasy games. Mm-hmm. I like the Advanced series a lot, but let's see. Why, well, if we're referring to like the Advanced ones, are you, are you talking about the uh, real time strategy ones, the Arctic Attack yep. ones? Yeah. See, I, I count those separately. Like, I'm okay. just talking about main numbers okay. Final so, Fantasy. Because I never really played 7, 8, 9. I never played. The only ones I actually eight. played were 8 and 9. I only played 1 through 6. 9's a great throwback. So if you like the, if you like 4, 5, and 6, Nine is a good throwback to that style of okay. storytelling, yeah. character models. Because the character models, even though they were done in like the 3D FMVs, are still chibi like Zidane. He's a small little guy with a tail. Do you still have nine? Yes, I do. Mm. Huh. Yeah, after the podcast. I'm, I so may we, actually we, still we, look we for throw, a copy. We can just throw it on PlayStation, the PlayStation 3 and you can check out just how it looks. Okay. Like, I really like, thought... I, either I own the disc or I have it downloaded from mm. PS3. I can't remember. I think six. I think six. I like... I still like four. Four's really good. I still really like four a lot. Wait, I always confuse four and five. Which one was um five with Bart's? Five was the first one to have the job, the whole the job system. It was a, it's Yeah, I think I gotta flip four and five now. So I four think, I think it goes for me it goes nine, six, four, five. Okay. So I always because I played I literally played four and five back to back on my DS. Okay, okay. So like they're they kind of blend in together. Which ones had the Dragoon Warriors? The guys with like the red armor? Is that four or five? It wasn't four. Then, okay, it's three. Oh, five, Jesus Christ! Like four or oh, five then. Okay, because the only the only Dragoon in four was was Kane. Yeah. Okay. So I think I okay, I think I did oh. right my first time. Like I said, I played those two back to back. Okay. And and when I say back to back, I literally finished one, started the second one that uh, day. Okay. <laughs> well, it was funny because when I originally played six, which is three. Um. Every single one of my main six characters, six to five characters, how many for a party? Five? Anyways, the, my main party, I think five like, or six characters. We're all level 99. They have every single Esper spell. I farmed out the economizers. So, like, I could use Ultima for one cost of one magic point. And I was. Well, basically, I just did. So I would sit in my beanbag chair. And I would do circles and just fight brachiosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I did on. That's kind of what I did on. Damn, nine. I'm gonna lose because I got distracted by that. <laughs> on nine, I found this island with like these super strong dragons, yeah. and I was. Is I started the island of heaven and hell. I don't. I don't. No, I don't think it's name. I think it's oh, like. Okay. I don't know if it was a glitch or just something they kept off the map. Like just you had to come across it. Okay. And I fought these dragons. That were so powerful that I I started at that um, at that island at like level thirty. It didn't take me long to get everybody up to ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I just went through, just tore through the rest of the well, game. It's funny. It's like uh, at least well, they didn't run away like they did in Earthbound because it got to a point in Earthbound where my guys are so powerful that the star men at the end of the game would run away from me. See, I, I I've got I've got Earthbound downloaded. I haven't gotten to play yet. Because that's the thing is I've got it down, and I might have to rebuy it on my 3DS. Because I don't have time to play RPGs anymore. Oh yeah. Like that's I was trying to, I was trying to replay that, six because I've got six on my PlayStation Three, and I was trying to replay it, but I can't sit down for the hours it takes to it, play an RPG. Oh, yeah. To go back through and get all of Realms stuff, get yeah. all of Strago stuff, get all of um, Gao stuff. Like yeah, no. Yeah, because I don't need the cool FMVs. They would be cool, but if I could get the Final Fantasy games released on the 3DS. So I can just download them to my 3DS. That'd be great because that's you asked me what I do when I slug. I also I either nap, read a book, or play my 3DS. Mm-hmm. So okay. that's what I'll do on that one. Like I've got I've got I've had every release of Chrono Trigger in America. Okay. I own the I own the original Super Nintendo. Still got you've it. Gotten, you've gotten you've gotten you've gotten the best ending, right? I've got all the endings. Okay. I, I I beat I've beaten the game. I, I had I had the uh, the the book and I had like I had to go through and get all the yeah. endings. I, I've beaten that game like 22 times. Granted, some of those are I start New Game Plus, I go right to Lavos and beat yeah, them like yeah, that. Yeah. That's one of the endings. 
But yeah, and I just love that game, and um, I only beat it like once or twice on the Super Nintendo. But once I got it for the, and I beat it twice on my PlayStation because it really is a better cutscene. Mm -hmm. But then I beat it all the other times on my DS because I'll just play it like I haven't played it in a couple of years, but I'll probably get that itch again, throw it on my DS, play it, beat it several times. So such a good game. It is, and it's a fantastic game. And it's it's probably I would say like granted graphics are better now, but if you've never played an RPG before, that's the first RPG you need to play. Because that's actually what got me to RPGs. I played that first, then I played the Final Fantasy games. Yeah. And that's Secret of Mana? I've only played a little bit of Secret of Mana. I didn't own it, my buddy did, and because you okay. could play the two-player on it, yeah, yeah. we would do that every once in a while. So I've never completed Secret of Mana. And I was actually thinking about that today because I was watching something on it on YouTube, and I was like, i got to find Secret Cause of you Mana. Because you, you can get the translated version of Secret of Mana 2, or Secret of Sensei 3. Because Final Fantasy Legend, for the original Game Boy, yes, that was actually the prequel. Yeah, it was a mana game. Yeah. To the Secret of Mana. Well, it's a mana. Well, it's like Legend of Mana. Yeah, it's, it's part they, of the Mana series. But, but they called it Final Fantasy Legends because they thought it would sell better as a Final Fantasy yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. Not a mana. But Secret of Mana. What the? What? what is, yeah. What the? He looks like a reassembled version of the Awakening. I think he looks like. For some reason, like... He looks like the Anunnaki it, with that beard. Uh, the movie Return to Oz popped into my head. But, like, I don't think... I don't know. That was a freaky movie. No, Return you know what that guy Oz. looks like? He looks like the rock monster from Never Ending Story. Just with a different face. The Never Ending Story. Yes. <laughs> That's what that guy looks like. So, did we ever find out what Bastion's mother's name was? Uh, or did he just whisper it to her? I think he just whispered it to her. Okay. And the thing is, I refuse to ever watch Never Ending Story again because I have such great memories of that movie. Yeah, you don't want to ruin that I one. I feel it probably sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to know that it sucks. No, the, cool. the second one was good, I thought. I, I, liked it as I a actually kid. never saw the second one. The I second, liked it as a the kid. The second one had... Um, but that's one of those things I'm afraid to go The guy who was in uh, Sequest... The Sequest? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, did he kill himself? He did. He Jonathan did. Brandis? Yeah, yeah. Jonathan Brandis. Yeah, I think he hung himself. He was in Sidekicks. Yeah. I remember that too. Maybe yes, too. he was. Chuck Norris! And Lady hey. Bugs. Lady Bugs? Oh, that's right. He yeah, was yeah, he was in Lady, Lady Bugs. Lady Bugs. Like, <laughs> oh, Rodney Danger. Danger. Rodney Danger. Yeah. yeah. And he gets, he gets the ball. That one chick he had the crush on, I had such crush on back in the day. Like, I can't remember what she looks like, but I remember like, I don't know, we were like, probably like, what, nine, ten years old. Yeah, old, that sounds about right. Yeah, wait, when was that? I want to say early, school. early 90s. Okay, yeah, it was like middle school, yeah. Shit, we still So, yeah, I was like, wow, she's pretty. I'm going to look that up later, because I really don't remember what you're talking about now. <laughs> I remember almost nothing about Ladybugs. Well, that's I why I wanted to join the soccer team, because he, like, he was attracted to this yeah. blonde girl. And then he gets in the ball, he got kicked in the ball, hit him in the nuts, and then yeah. he got on the ground, and everyone's like, what? <laughs> Which is bullshit, because I, I know firsthand from women telling me, you get hit in the vagina hard. It's not quite as bad as dick punch, yeah, but it hurts. Let's face already, it, yeah. both areas on men and women are sensitive. Exactly, exactly. They're not meant to be hit by things. Yeah. They're meant to suck together. <laughs> That's how sex works, right? Yeah. <laughs> suck <laughs> together. <sighs> oh, man. But I think right here is a good point where we'll go get Brandon and we will start our star in the, I'm sorry, internet star in a reasonable priced car. All right. So, as we promoted last week, uh, when we had our good buddy H to the Izzo on the program. H to the Izzo! He set a lap time for our internet star in a reasonably priced car. And so, we have two men going to try to tackle and take down our Stig's time. First up is Brandon, a true internet star, as he's going to be in and out of this podcast. So you can be on another podcast over the phone. Boom! But that's Jeff's podcast. No one listens to that anyways. Boom! I'm sure those of you on the audio stream are like, oh, it's that dumbass Jeff. Where's the nerds? <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be on Jeff's podcast also. We're gonna, we should do like a simulcast just to piss him off. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably be a little upset about that. I know. That's why we're going to do get, it. Get us kicked off the yeah. network. <laughs> and then we got James who's off frame, but will be on frame when he's doing his lap. So they're gonna do their best attempt to break Izzo's uh, top gear time because he set the new record. He beat mine by like 0.2 seconds. Pisses me off. 
So Brandon's gonna be up first, so let me pull it up. So 203.668, I think was the best one. You're a PS4 guy? Yeah. Well, I played 360 for a while. I've been originally a PS guy, but like I went 360 in college because the network was like, you know what I mean? Like the network. Yeah, live is. <laughs> you could do it for free. I mean, you could play like PS, the PlayStation Network was free, but it wasn't good. So yeah. Yeah. Put a piece of tape at the bottom well, of that even though, even magazine because uh, it's showing his time right there. Like, uh, and again, I don't want them to see their time. It's not with that reveal. Like, you know what? But what's the deal with the PSN now? Because most people, you, you buy the PSN Gold. Yeah, to but, play the play on the PS4 online, you have to pay for it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not free like on the PS3. 50 well, bucks a year. It's uh, much cheaper. Yeah. Because each network, though, I think, does better as far as, uh, like, the free games. They always have, like... Not a... PS4... My, PS4 Microsoft's compared to Xbox... Now. Yeah, Microsoft is doing that now. PS4 compared... PS4 compared to Xbox One. Xbox One, so far, has had better free games since yeah. I've had them. No, no, so hang it vertically. Uh, Dead Space, because yeah. Dead Space... Yeah. Bring it lower, bring it lower, well, though. It was Dead Space, 360 version, and, uh... Okay, he's getting ready to finish this lap, so I hope you can see it. was, uh, free, uh... Oh, uh, this, this week, so last Get ready to look, because this is going to be his best time, because he had already been better eight seconds than the previous lap. That's a loss, always for that. Uh, yeah, it's still going to be better. Alright, now we have James. James, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, thank you. He's going to attempt his uh, fastest lap time. He's going to try to beat um, Izzo's 1.45.688 as uh, Gran Turismo's. I feel they're, they're, those two are more realistic, but I have more fun with Forza than I do with the Gran Turismo games. What I love about this Grand, uh, not Grand Turismo, this Forza game, you don't, when you're doing an offline race, you're not racing against just um, average, um, AI. You're racing against your friends list of who has this game and other online people. Because the game like analyzes how well you drive and so puts like, like your ghost in other people's games. Like so, AI. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, and so like when you're not playing this game, when you're not even online, your ghost will race other people and earn you credits. Nice. No, when you rebought this game, it didn't get you as many credits as you hoped it would. I am. That's because um, that's because I bought the game of the year edition. Mm. I think if I'd have rebought the regular oh, edition, oh, regular edition would have done it. Yeah. Because mm. it, it reloaded all my save files. Yeah. It just had so much updating to do, which is probably, I assume you probably have to have the game up to date too. Mm. shit out of it on my three on my Xbox One prior to the PlayStation on the PlayStation once I got my PS4. That's when Keach bought me Destiny and like uh, <laughs> it's constantly Yeah, because we have this friend who is obsessed with Destiny and he always tried to get me to buy it. Yeah, you need one of the many hours I don't play And I told him I was like, dude, I'm not buying that game. Thousands I'm not buying that game. Hours. 
And he's like, what if I bought it for you? I was like, you buy it for me, Keish, I'll play it. So he, uh, what was it, like two, three weeks ago, Brandon? He bought me the Taken King. <laughs> and he bought me a digital copy, so I couldn't trade it in. <laughs> he wanted to make sure you were well, the patch, uh, yeah. the new patch just came out, the April update just came out. Yeah, I haven't downloaded that yet, because I haven't, I haven't played. I played... Not nearly as many as Keish. I put like 2,000. Dude, yeah, Keish had like a year of where... I always saw him online. I looked at my Battlefront hours. I've only put in. I, I got the game when it first came out. I've only put in like a hundred hours of Battlefront. Dude, I, I think I averaged. Dude, like that's a man. I would say I maybe have maybe ten hours of um, Destiny. Because I prefer. Because if Keish isn't on, I'm probably gonna play the Division over Destiny. I like the Division a little bit better. Yeah, I like. The, I, I played. I played Destiny once. I just. I and I was honest with Keish when I thought I was like, I like Halo 5 better than I like Destiny. Yeah. And uh, Halo 5 gets you the fuck off. Oh, just uh, playing the game. Like, yeah. I haven't done any PvP for um, Destiny yet. It's, I don't know, it's okay. God better be good at Destiny's PvP because I was the shit on Halo 5. <laughs> and I'm like, a, yeah. I'm like a mediocre Halo player, but for some reason Halo 5 just clicked with me. Yeah. In our very first podcast I'm playing Halo 5, me and my buddy Vic. And we are back from the star in the reason. Oh, I'm sorry, internet star in the reason request car. So, gentlemen, you guys, it was kind of a rocky <laughs> yeah, road a getting little, on our uh, test bit. track. Oh my God. I wish I could give you the excuse that it was wet and rainy for all the times you guys went off the track. Yeah. But it did not. Um, so, out of the two of you, who do you think had the best time? I think I had the best time. Yeah, I think I, I stayed the on the track. Yeah, yeah. You might have hit more things. Yeah, I hit more things. I kept, I kept, it, sure I kept it on the track a little bit. It was that I one. Think it was for you, your bang was that the, the turn um, right at the camera uh, crane. You would. You were like most people like to go in front of that camera. You're like, no, no, no. I'm gonna go around. Let me let me crane it camera. just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you around Gamba, and you're just like, let me just take this as wide, get in that yeah. grass. See, see, I like I like using the one part with the wall. I like using the wall as, as, a, as, as a guy. Buffer, buffer, as a yeah. guy. <laughs> I figure if I bounce off the wall, it allows me to make that. Well, we're, we're, we're all rocking the right. It's yeah. hockey season. It's yeah, a big shot. You're using, you're using the boards. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so we will start with Brandon. Yeah. We'll, we'll get your time. I'm guessing yeah. my time was. Two so. something, probably for my best time. Brandon, write that on there. Do my best, Jeremy Clarkson. Brandon, you did it in one minute. So the top time is one minute forty five point six eight eight. You did it in one minute fifty oh. huh? six. Huh? Eleven seconds. Point one. I think, I think I could have got the time if I had gone second. So, I mean, going first, you, know, you, gosh, got, you got to watch man. it about four laps. So we'll put I you. Know, I, I don't know if I. We'll put you right there. But but Izzo doesn't count as the top of the leaderboard because he's our stig. All he right. just sets the time, so he's a little bit separately. So you have the number one time right now. Of all number people. one. That's what I like to hear. Okay, let's see. So James. Do you think you did better than Brandon? I don't know. I don't think so. So the time to beat for the guest is one minute fifty six seconds point one. So does that make him a record holder of sorts? Brandon is currently the record holder. Do I get a belt? <laughs> you get nothing. Oh. <laughs> maybe maybe at the uh, we'll, we'll, we're gonna count this Nelson as episode one season. Oh, we'll do it episode two season two. Izzo setting the time season one. This will be episode two uh, for season two. Oh, we wanted to show with seasons. Yeah, you did it in. <laughs> Two minutes. Oh, jeez. Yes. <laughs> One second. Okay, that's okay. too bad. Point seven. Oh, so uh, you go right there. So there we have our very first Top Gear leaderboard, which I actually meant to put it on my shoulder when I did that, but whatever. Uh, there we have our internet star in a reasonably priced car. Right. So we're going to keep adding to that every week seconds. with our guests. So you guys were the guinea pigs. So well, after now I'm gonna go buy this game. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're, you're gonna come back later on. It's like one minute thirty six seconds. <laughs> I'm gonna get hounded now, Nelson. When can I come back on the show? Nelson, 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 Nelson. Nelson. I've been practicing. I've been training. <laughs> Look at these thumbs. This is the thumbs right? of a champ. They yeah. don't move anymore. <laughs> yeah. They just move slightly to the left and right. They move in increments. 
Wow. But we got a couple more things to cover. Um, we're going to be playing some Rocket League as we cover them because That's Rocket the League is <laughs> awesome. It's a go to game. Yeah, so uh, James, Brandon, you guys have not played this shit, so let me set it up for you guys. Oh, and of course I come in the middle of the game. Oh, and we have a shit connection to this game. Oh, man. Yeah, it's B. Because I wonder, because it was like... It was smooth! US East, US, US West, Europe, and Oceania. And where's Oceania? I think that's why. Okay. Oceania? I think that's more. Yeah, it's like Asia. I think it's okay. Asia. okay. Maybe Indonesia? Because, yeah. like, Australians uh, are Australia, Australia, yeah. having really yeah. bad internet. So while we're... While really we're, pay, are paying, I guess. So. Yeah. So while we're doing this, uh, the Nintendo NX... Uh, launch is right around the corner of rumors that are be believed for the holiday um, 2016. So um, there's now the rumor launch titles, uh, and they're just going to be ports of the Wii U, including Mario Maker. And, Which is a reason to buy the Wii U. Yeah. Mario Maker and um, Splatoon, Smash Brothers, and a uh, simultaneous re release of. Um, Zelda Wii U and Zelda on the NX. So, and there's no, and the also on that rumor is that 20, uh, we're not gonna see any third parties until 2017. Oh, wow. Like early 2017. Because, really? so, like, dev kits haven't even been delivered yet. From, and if these are rumors to be believed, but they are from pretty credible sources. Okay. Um, on, like, Neo. Jesus. We're just gonna ask Neo it, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> on like NeoGaf, Reddit, um, like people who usually I don't even think that guy's playing, so it's basically two on three. Oh man. Um so it's 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 people who when they report rumors for Nintendo are usually correct. So there's no reason to believe that these people are just like doing this for attention or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um so what do we think about these launch titles being ports like I'm getting the NX, I'm a big Nintendo guy. So I'm going to get it. Um, you guys don't have a Wii U, correct? No. I, I, so given that some of these games, like especially Splatoon, sold really well for a new IP. What is Splatoon? Yeah, it's Nintendo's version of a third-person shooter. It's actually it's uh, a shit ton of fun. Yeah, okay. it's it's paintball. Yeah, it's basically paintball. So it's not like a Splatoon. No. Splatoon. Okay. Splatoon. <laughs> Splatoon. Okay. Yeah, that'd be yeah. funny. He got to spit into a Splatoon. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, given that you guys don't already own a Wii U, because for me, I might be able to hold off on an NX with the exception of maybe playing Zelda, like getting that for the NX instead of the Wii U. So, these acclaimed games by Nintendo coming out on a new system that's supposed to be either just as powerful or possibly more powerful than a PS4, would that get you guys to want to shell out the money for a new Nintendo system? Since you don't have the Wii U, you don't have these games already. I mean, with, with Nintendo, you're always going to have your core titles, which are going to be must-buys. Yeah. But, I don't know. I mean, we're looking at probably $400 price tag, right? Uh, there has been zero room on a price. Okay. And Nintendo generally likes to keep things cheap. Yeah. I would say $400 would be pushing it, especially with some of the rumors of the system is that part of the uh, power of it is it uses the clou a cloud-based processor oh, right, right, right. to where what? while really? your system's turned off, other people can use your system to power their system. And theoretically, like you could buy more components for your system, like other systems, other handhelds, to make your system run even better offline. Again, these are all just kind of yeah, rumors. I don't know why I like that necessarily. It seems, huh? But also, what Nintendo is going to do to compensate you? Again, rumors, not anything fact. Um, for like allowing your system to be used while you're not using it to help process that's, that's the power. That's an optional thing, right? They're, huh? That's an optional thing, right? Yeah, it's an optional thing. You can have it turned off. But what they're going to do to compensate you for that is give you like Nintendo bucks to where you can buy games in the online store, buy DLC and stuff uh, like that. Okay. So, so they're not just going to use your system yeah, they, for they every reason. That, yeah, so if like their, true. their club Nintendo, yeah. So that's what they're going to do. See, if all that's true, I would be tempted. I would, yeah. Because I don't have a Wii U yet. I've, I've actually been wanting to get one because of Mario Maker. And only Mario Maker. Yeah, but that also begs the question about the controller, because originally it was supposed to be like a controller kind of like this. Yeah, that's, that, that's what and I'm you need, about. you need kind of the Wii U 
controller to play Mario Maker. Really. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested in seeing um, the how that works. Compatibility. Yeah, like how how is Mario Maker going to work on the NX? If this rumor is true, which yeah, kind of makes me true. wonder how. There you go. You can have a roll out of gin. Okay. How true this rumor might be. Um, just because I don't see all the patents I've seen with the controller, if you just hit ready, and you'll go to the next match as soon as okay. this is done. Um, I don't know how true that is, so it's kind of like a wait and see. But I could see the appeal for people who don't own a Wii U to get this system, because, again, it's supposed to be as powerful as a PS4, so why not? Because you're going to have a Nintendo system that's that powerful. It might bring the third parties back. Blu-ray, Nintendo. Blu-ray, like, is it going to have the media support, like Blu-ray? There's been nothing said about that in the rumors at all. Okay. Uh, but in a sense, I don't even know, like, if the disc or Blu-ray, that's one thing. But having a Blu-ray player, do you really need that anymore? Because a lot of people are going all digital. That's also yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, that's true. A lot, of, a lot of people are streaming from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Yeah. And then, like, our buddy Keish, Brandon, yeah. he buys everything iTunes Store. All yeah. digital releases and yep. things like that. I'm more of a. I like my physical I, I media. Like the physical, yeah. I, need physical I like media. I like the physical yeah. copies. Yeah. It's, it's like just, having a library. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. something about like you know, like you open that package, you smell the plastic. Yeah, you know? like I, I, I gotta have that. Yeah. And right. for me, Pop that security tag. Yeah. And, and for me, it's a thing. It's like, uh, and wow, and that guy who's not playing is still in the room. Wow. Um, usually the game, this game is pretty good about booting people when they're idle. Booty. But, um, yeah, for me, it's one of those things, like, if you own so many, uh, movies, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you know, run out of space on your hard drives if it's, like, an Apple TV or things like that. Yeah. So you're going to have to store things in the cloud. So what if it's a bad storm, your internet gets knocked out, but you still have yeah, power, that's and you want to watch Jurassic World, but you don't have a download to your, uh, device, yeah. you've, have, you've got to stream it, but you can't stream it. That's why I don't like streaming. And I really yeah. think I really think systems now, especially one thing I, I I own a PS4, but the one thing I think that they should do, I think every system now should be minimum one terabyte. Yeah. Like I, I, don't, oh, yeah. I don't understand why. Like I saw the Xbox One, they have a one terabyte one, but with my PS4 at 500 gigs, you're looking at maybe. Eight to ten games max you can put on yeah. that hard drive, Most, especially with yeah. the DLC. Yeah, because it, it, it was kind of fun thing. Like I didn't, I wasn't even ready for that because, like, with my Xbox 360, I I have like 120 gigabyte hard drive, something like that, or 320 whatever. Yeah. But I've got shit tons of games downloaded. Yeah, I have a million games on my 360. Yeah, and, as well. and yeah, and I've still got. I, I maybe have used half that hard drive up. Yeah. And then I bought, you know, you buy a 500 gigabyte hard drive when we got the systems at launch. Like, oh, that's gonna be enough. I can, and then like. Yeah. Three games are on that system. Like, holy shit! I've yeah. got like no oh, room anymore. No. Just like, yeah. like yeah. For the first, like when I got my PS4, it came with Batman Arkham Knight, and right. I put that oh, on man. there. That was fifty-four gigs yeah. before that I was even started gigs. playing the game. Oh, it was man. like fifty-four yeah. gigs before the beginning. That didn't I mean, that game is huge. Yeah, yeah. I never yeah. knew. So yeah, so well. it, it's one of those things. It's like, man, it's like yeah, one terabyte should be the standard now. Yeah. Just, especially because they make you install the games now. It'd be one thing, because you know, on the 360, again, I've got a ton of games installed on that, especially thanks to like Xbox Games with Gold. But yeah, it's not taking up a lot of my hard drive space. And But the games I physically own take up almost no space yeah. because I'm just saving uh, my save files that I'm not saving the game onto it. I think that's going to be a problem. Like, when you're, let's say, five or six years in, I have a PS4. Yeah, because. And what, what about a game that I bought? first year I got it and I want to keep that on there but in order to be able to play a new game I have to delete some delete, space yeah. and like my brother he has a PS4 and he plays a lot more than I do and he's, uh, he's coming across that issue right now he yeah. had to buy a and what's nice about the Xbox I don't know about the PS4 what's nice about the Xbox is the save files are for the game so minuscule what I do is if I trade a game in or if I don't have room anymore I delete the game but it saves my game file on there so when I reinstall the game all my progress is still there right? yeah see I haven't I, I gotta delve a little deeper into it and see if I can do that because that'll yeah. be good. Because I think right now it's just I just see it when I looked at my file size. I just see one game forty gigs, this game yeah. fifty gigs. And I'm like I don't know how much like, how many games can I get before I have to start deleting a lot of content. Yeah, but luckily with my Xbox, I bought a one terabyte external hard drive, so now I have one point five terabytes. So in spite of all the games I've downloaded now, I've got plenty of space yeah. at this point. But yeah, it was a problem at first before I broke down about the uh, external hard drive. It's just kind of like, man, I don't. Ugh, I got four games on here and I'm down to like 15% left yeah. 
of my hard drive space, so. See, now you got me wanting to check my hard drive space when I get back home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see how much space I have. Yeah, because I, I got a two terabyte drive connected to my Xbox uh, One. So, I don't have to really worry about stuff like that for a while. But I, those games can mm -hmm. get really big. Yeah, plus one thing that um, I like um, about digital games, though, again, I'm more of a I like my physical copy, especially if I buy a game and I end up not liking it or don't yeah. play it that much, I can trade it in. Um, but you're stuck with Destiny. Yeah, I'm stuck with Destiny. <laughs> I didn't buy Destiny, it was given to me, so I don't care. You're still stuck with it. Um, I mean, you know Keith did not purpose, I could trade it, probably. Yeah. Cause I, he, I guarantee you. Because he could have bought, bought the physical copy for me for 30 bucks. He bought the digital copy for 60 <laughs> No, I can't get rid of it now. It's there. It's probably a combination of you're never getting rid of it, and he was probably too lazy to buy it. <laughs> yeah, because he just that store. Yeah. Yeah, he just sent. He just. Well, no, he could have ordered from Amazon and had it delivered to my house. Oh uh, yeah. But he yeah. just he bought he bought the digital copy and sent it to me via email. Um, yeah, I love yeah, I know, yeah. right? Because he wanted me to play. Uh, Destiny's like, I'm not buying that game. He's like, if you buy it for me, I'll play it for you. I'll play it with you, and I was an, I'm a man of my word. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even say it was a backfire, really, because <laughs> you. One of the lights fell down by the belt. Ah, okay. Yeah, because it's not a bad game. I enjoy it, but I'm not into it like he's into it. Yeah. yeah. But there are a few games that I get that into. Like Metal Gear Solid Five and Fallout 4 are probably the only games on this gen... Oh, and the Tomb Raider games. Mm. Are the only games on this generation that I've really gotten into where I'll come home, like, I'll, like, be looking forward to just like, alright, I gotta go to work, and then it's the gym, then I make dinner. After that, after I put the boy to bed, it is three hours of Tomb Raider. It's three hours of metal here, <laughs> and with Fallout, it'd be like it's eight hours of Fallout because all of a sudden yeah. it's two oh, a.m. Yeah. and I'm like, yeah. I gotta be up in three hours. Shit! <laughs> I was like, I just spent two hours just going through my inventory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just crafting a gun and it's like bedtime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I gotta delve back into the DLC for uh, Fallout because I'm gonna wake up to go to work and you're still playing. <laughs> Josh, have you gone to bed yet? No, what time is it? It's time to go to work, dude. You make your gun <laughs> yet? <laughs> I'm still making this gun. Oh, shit. Oh. I, the day that happens, I will just laugh hysterically. I would not be able oh, to do blowout. anything fun. It is a blowout. That CJ Warrior is a badass mofo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, plus you have a guy not playing, so it's two on three, so it makes it kind of hard. Yeah. So... Also, that was released today was the international trailer for uh, the new Godzilla movie. Not not an American Godzilla, mind you, um, for you gaijin out there. Um, <laughs> the actual uh, Toho Productions Godzilla rubber suit still, which I kind of dig. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Godzilla's got a makeover. Yeah, it looks and kind of red there. Yeah, he's got the red. I don't know if it's like muscle or radiation coming through. Red on the spikes. He's got like a scorpion style tail. It looked yeah, like. Yeah. So I've got to wonder if this is just a refresh or redesign to keep Godzilla hip with the young kids who like their Pokemons and Digimons. <laughs> I don't know what Japanese kids are into at all. Except for those well, trucks. Oh, that weird What do they call it in South Park? What do they call it in South Park? Um, oh, what do they call it? I forgot. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Look it up, Nelson. <laughs> um, Pochipmon. Pochipmon. Oh, it was Pochipmon. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's Pochipmon. Pochipmon or something like that. But yeah, so I I, I I'm oh well, I'm interested in Godzilla period because I grew up loving Godzilla. Yeah. But I'm interested to see if this is like some like something happening Godzilla because he's looking like he's a villain again. Yeah. Like this doesn't look like you're kind of corny. He's gonna battle Mothra. He's gonna battle Mecha Godzilla. He was destroying the city, and I didn't see any other monsters. So I gotta wonder yeah, if this is the bad guy again. yeah. It's and it's called Godzilla Resurgence. So is uh, this a reboot of the Toho Godzilla? Did something happen to Godzilla in the last 10 years where he got mutated? So You're sleeping and woke him up. Yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking his face looked a little more demony. Yeah, it did. Uh, especially his teeth. His teeth. Matthew Broderick shirt. back, I think. Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> in fact, I, li I like to think... That's what it is. He was mad about Godzilla 97. Actually, yeah. they, they murdered that Godzilla in like the last Godzilla. Oh, movie. did they really? Yeah, Godzilla straight took it out. I like to think Matthew Broderick died soon after Ferris Bueller was filmed, <laughs> because he's not the same person he was in Ferris Bueller. He was really cool, no, and now he's just yeah. lame. He's been lame since. Oh, Jennifer Grey wasn't the like same. Him, um, like Jennifer Grey wasn't the same because she got into a nasty car accident. Her face got messed up. Like, well, no, no, she actually just got a she got a nose I hate job. The cable guy. What? I 
don't like that movie. I like him in the producers. I thought he was. And I don't get why people think that's like one of the funniest movies. I would say the guy. Oh, but I I like it. I mean, Jim Carrey. And who who would have thought the um the 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 main female character is the girl who's his wife? Yeah, that and isn't she the same girl from a lot of the she was in uh, movies now? Like she was in a Big Daddy. Yeah. Um, you gotta you gotta keep it down. You're right by the microphone. So, um, you are on blue team. Oh, I'm trying to score on the orange one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That dude is still not playing. Mm. He was playing for a sec. He, he entered, he re entered the game. We're gonna have to back out completely after this match because that's another. Neither one of them were moving. Oh, wow. How are they not getting booted? Just the thing is, like, one thing I love about this game is... Oh, that's what... Oh, okay, it's, they're both the same dude, so it's two people playing on one system. So that's why the one guy's not getting booted. Because this game's actually really good about booting you. If you're, like, idle for 30 seconds, you're gone and replaced by a bot or another player. So that's one thing I love about this. They're cheating! They might actually be cheating. Oh. Oh, they got booted. Oh, someone got booted. Yeah, because if they're a guest of somebody, if they're not on your team and they're not playing, that, that's cheating. Yeah. Oh, it looks like one of the big homies got booted, so. Hmm. And he moved there, so maybe you're good now. Maybe it's going to be three on three. I'll have to see that. Yep, he's playing. All right. We got a real three on three going now. Nice. Armstrong's in it. Ah. Except I think Armstrong's a bot. Yeah. Well, you kind of just scored that point. I was trying to turn it around. I couldn't get around. <laughs> I'm just trying, trying to help, help though. Going. Hey, I was just trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> An assist by Brandon. <laughs> Best player on the other team. Oh, oh man. You really know, in Brazil, you, you would have been killed by now. Yeah, they had a murder jury. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> oh. So I wanted to bring this up. Because I, I, it was something that always kind of bugged me. About uh, you know the the famous slow motion scene of the Waynes dying, and it's always uh, like capitalized with oh, Martha yeah, Wayne's yeah, yeah. pearls being snatched well, that, that's in, uh, and spilling. It's in every death scene of Martha well, Wayne. It's it's almost it's almost panel for panel in Batman v Superman Year One. Yeah, so that, that's what like Frank Miller made that famous in Year One. But anyways, I always wanted to touch on that because something always bugged me about it when I got older and I couldn't figure out what. And Nelson knows I, I used to manage a jewelry store. Here's the thing about really nice pearls. They're knotted. So in between each pearl, it's knotted. So if your string gets broken, you will maybe only lose one pearl. You won't lose the entire string. Uh, so when Martha's string gets broken, you see those pearls go everywhere. I think that's Thomas everywhere. got cheap as fuck. And by her... <laughs> Thomas did not go to Jared. No, he did <laughs> not. He went to Walmart and made a string of pearls. Well, I, I, think, I think the whole... Pearls break. I think that's more so for. I know so it's Im cinematic. it's imagery, but yeah, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. as someone who knows what a nice set yeah. of pearls looks I, like, I, I think the, the <laughs> thing with like Martha dying, it's the same way like with Spider Man. They always got to show Uncle Ben getting shot. You know, it's we've only seen it twice. Yeah, we've but, seen the Waynes die nine. Times. But I mean, but, but that's a I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure if, if there are nine different Spider Man movies, you probably would have seen Uncle Ben kick it. No, because we're actually not going to see Uncle Ben die in this next one. Really? Yeah, it's it's, it's not, not going to be an origin story. Yeah, because remember he's already Spider Man. In Civil War, and Homecoming takes place after Civil War. Yeah. Does so, it? Yep. Oh, okay. Which is good, because I'm glad Marvel did that, because we really don't need another Yeah, we Spider already Man know. Origin. We already know. Yeah, like, origin story. I feel the three origin stories we never really have to see again, unless, like, comic book movies go away for 100 years. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. Yeah. yeah. Those three, I don't think we ever need to see again. Yeah. And yeah, actually, that's actually one of the things I You know, one not... thing the X-Men movies don't get credit for, though they did do a prequel, uh, it started out with no origin story. The X Men were a thing. That's actually very true. I never realized that. Yeah, it was never yeah. really an origin story for the X Men. Like we got introduced to Rogue, and like Wolverine didn't have an origin story, but he was a, it was a mystery of his past and everything like that. So did we, they show like through like flashbacks? Kind of, sort of, but it was never really a full origin story. It just kind of like hinted at things. Like it didn't show you the full on flashback. So I mean, they don't uh, like when people bitch about origin stories getting done too much. They don't give Brian Singer credit enough for like saying, yeah. hey. I know who most of these people are coming to see this movie. They know the backstory. They're the kind of people that scream at a child in the middle of the theater to shut him up. Yeah. 
as so that's what, what happened in my first shoot, uh, seeing of uh, X Men One. So yeah. when uh, when Singer did Superman Returns, did he do a? No, it was a sequel was to uh, Superman, Superman Two. 2. Yeah, okay. And then they put out the Richard Downer cut, and that really made his movie irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I get what Singer was trying to do, but it just didn't work. Like, it really didn't work trying to make a sequel to Superman 2. I still like it. Oh, no, I like Superman Returns, but it, it, I can see why they didn't turn it into a franchise. Like, mm -hmm. why it killed the franchise. Yeah. Because it was too artsy. At that point, we had had so many really good, like, sci-fi and action films mm -hmm. to where the, the whole Donner view of Superman, it needed an update. Like, you still have the hope and everything like that. What you really needed was some action. And Superman lifting an island and throwing it into the sun is not action. Mm -hmm. So, I though mean, I will say, like, um, the bank robbery scene and the car chase scene were pretty cool. Yeah. In that movie. And it's still better than Man of Steel. I mean, we need Sorry, Nuclear Man, Man yeah. back and, you know, watch Richard it. Pryor, Peter Hacker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that scene, like, that computer, like, enveloping that woman at the end of Superman yeah. 3 is... It still gives me nightmares today. That is yeah. a terrifying that is actually, scene. That is very terrifying. I forgot all about that That is thing. a terrifying <laughs> scene. I forgot Sweet all about that. Tonight. Damn it. Yeah. And now I'm going to have nightmares. Good. Yeah, I didn't really Hate like... You. I like Kevin Spacey, but I didn't necessarily like him necessarily as... Luther. He's better I than think, Jesse Eisenberg as Luther. I think House okay. of Cards... <laughs> I think House is, of Cards, Kevin Spacey... The thing is with the nice Luther thing. that... So, Snyder came out later and said the Luther that he was playing was based off the original Luther, which is supposed to be like this crazy scientist and mentor guy. Yeah, which, is, which is true. <laughs> it's true. It is, but he's not, I don't know, he's not the Riddler from Batman Forever, which is what J Jesse Eisenberg is playing. Yeah, so like the direction, I think, that they... But see, here's the problem with, with, with Snyder's Superman movies. After the fact, ever, after everybody's poked holes sort of thing... He has to come out and defend it. Yeah. If your movie is good as a director, you never have to defend it. You may have to defend a choice here and there, like, oh, I did this because... You might have to do that, but you don't have to defend, like, every aspect of your movie. And then yeah. when you make a sequel, it doesn't have to kowtow to every complaint. Like, it seems like every time there's a big fight scene, oh, it's 5 o'clock in downtown, everyone's gone home today! We can throw each other into buildings! <laughs> Yeah. So, you don't have to do things like that if you make a good movie in the first place. Because if you notice, Josh Whedon didn't apologize for anything that happened in the Avengers movie. He's Where still saying the uh, Colt is dead. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's the producer and his brother's the head writer for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yep, yep. I like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm I dropped off after two, second season. Two I, I haven't picked up uh, for the second season half of the season. Two, man. Season two is where it picked up. Well, see, I, I quit like halfway through that season. I was done. Uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just this the show. Yeah, not season for me the end, like the second half of season two was good. I have not picked up the second half. And you of know the what? Well, doesn't help me even think about getting back into it. The fact that Daredevil and Jessica Jones are so damn good. That's also very. If true. I go, if I go back to Agents of Shield, Daredevil you're the war so fantastic. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, but I would earn that image. You earn something every time you play a match. Hey, I mean, let me let me go. <laughs> but dude, Daredevil season two. You know what's funny? Oh, if, if, if you've watched it, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's Spoiler fantastic. alert. <laughs> So, it, the, the, the last episode, when Daredevil and Electra are on the roof, I'm thinking, where's Punisher, where's Punisher, oh, I where's, where's Punisher, where's Punisher? <laughs> yeah. I was like, he's coming, he's coming, where is he, where is he? I was like, they need somebody to help take out these ninjas. He was on the camera so he just like shows, half of that fight. <laughs> so he shows up, and he starts more. shooting him and shooting all the ninjas in the head, and then Daredevil's like, yeah, thanks, Frank. He just kind of looks he, back, And yeah. he doesn't get pissed, like, you know, it's, but I guess to be fair... These ninjas are already dead. Yeah, and at so that, so at that point, it's like okay, fine. Daredevil's probably he probably doesn't doesn't really need to complain because it's like they're already dead. So what's the matter? Yeah, and I think at that point, God, this is a laggy ass connection. I think at that point though, he was so pissed because didn't doesn't he show up after um, Electra gets stabbed? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think at that point, he's just so enraged that it's like F it, these guys have got to die because they're gonna keep coming back. He kind of took, he kind of like took Frank's thing 
and ra and like you know, you put them in jail. You do this and this and this. Well, that's why it's not working. It's a half measure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's why my camera angle's all messed up. It's on the ball cam. I can't play with the ball cam. Oh. oh my God. But yeah, so I think I think at that point he's just like, you know what? They've murdered Electra. These guys are not gonna stop. They're gonna ruin my city. These guys aren't your common criminals. These guys need to die. So I think that's where um, Frank was com oh, not Frank, but um, Matt was coming with that when he yeah. was just like, you know, it's it's these guys can't be stopped with jail. So yeah. these guys have to die. Which is also something that I've I've always kind of like leaned towards Daredevil over Batman a little more because they have pretty much the same code. But Daredevil will overlook his code a little bit more than Superman. Oh, no, it's not Superman, Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are times when Batman's like... And, I, and, I, and I'm with Batman and Daredevil on the whole no-killing thing. But at the same time, guys like the Joker... No, you gotta put that dude down. <laughs> you cannot let him live. Yeah, Joker has at that like point, more... He has more single kills than any character in, in the DC universe. Yeah, because at that point... You know, you're responsible at that point. If you have a chance to seriously take him out and you don't, and you just send him back to jail and you know he's going to escape, you become responsible at that point for all those deaths that he creates. So Yeah, I feel guilty at some point. Yeah. Like, not necessarily doing the Frank Castle thing is like, everyone needs to die. Uh, but, you know, just at some, you got, you, there's, there's lines you need to draw. And sometimes drawing those lines, you know, at the Joker... Or at Snapping Zod's neck when you could have done a hundred other things to save all that family's life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, grabbed him and flew him in space. And last know. thing, you already, I mean, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Well, he didn't have to do that. He could have done, he could have used his freeze breath. He could have used his own heat ray. He could have, he could have just done a ton of other things. Yeah. But I think on that bombshell. The winner is of, you. Of Zack Snyder being a terrible director. <laughs> so I'm gonna say goodnight, Canada. <laughs> Good night, Canada. Good night, Canada. <laughs>